Hi everyone, welcome back to EIS Alaska. Well, as you can see, the boat's back in the water. Uh, we just kind of wanted to give you guys a quick update of where we're at and where we've been. So yeah, we'll go inside, show you guys what's changed. Yeah, so uh, it's late April now. Um, we were pretty busy on the big boat, but then Canter Cab came along and rockfish and cod and yep. those are kind of winding down for us now so yeah as you can see over here on the fishtail jig gears on uh, executed those fisheries and like dad says it's kind of winding down now so yeah um our processor is just about done doing fish for about the month of of may they're going to process kelp and so they won't be taking any fish so that gives us some time to work on our big boat and start figuring out what we're going to do for the summer. Um, yeah, we're back in the water. We're mobile again. Uh, things are probably a lot different than when you saw it last. But we'll give you kind of a quick tour around and uh, reacquaint you with um, where we're at in this project. And I guess at the same time, reacquaint ourselves because we're kind of just trying to pick up of where we left off and what we were actually doing. Yeah. Um, a bit maybe, of time uh, has gone by, <laughs> so. <laughs> maybe give a little roadmap going forward. Get uh, asked how, uh, how long till we start fishing the boat and everything, so we'll kind of just go over that briefly. Yeah, yeah, we've gotten a lot of questions of when we're gonna fish this boat. Um, I think sometime this summer is our plan. Uh, like I say, we've got a pretty solid month of just being able to work on here, not have the distractions of fishing right now. So um, we did accomplish a lot before Tanner Crab. We were hoping that we could use this boat, but it just didn't didn't make it. Uh, the timeline was just, there was too much to do, honestly, to mm -hmm. safely take this boat out and fish it. Um, we were getting close, but, but not close enough. So yep. here we are back on the job. We're picking up where we left off. Um, Guess we'll give you guys just a little glance around, uh, see what you've missed. There was a, a time leap in there, um, kind of mid-December to January sometime. Uh, Mid-January, so yeah. There was a, a lot of stuff we didn't capture just because it was really crunch time. So, uh, But that being said, there is remaining stuff to do, which is basically the same that we skipped. So Yeah, I think the biggest parts that too. we probably missed was the time in the yard. Um, you know, we, we went through all all the penetrations in the hull, all the through holes, uh, the keel coolers, everything was was pulled out and rebedded. Um, there was some stuff that was moved. There was some holes that were were covered up and covered over mm -hmm. and eliminated. So I think all told, we patched seven holes, I think, and yep. relocated two of them. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot going on in the yard there. Um, I wish that we could have caught it all, but the conditions weren't actually ideal. There was a lot of rain in there. Uh, it was, it's hard work in the yard as it is. And, um, and so that just kind of is what it is. But as far as the fish hold, the main one is near, is for the most part finished. Uh, the back hold still needs some work. So the stuff that we missed up forward we're going to do in the back so we'll catch you back up on that yeah so i don't know if we want to start here or down in the engine room uh we can we can start in the engine room either one yeah, yeah okay let's go check out the engine room yeah Well, it's kind of a big old giant mess down here. Got some plumbing and stuff strewn around. But uh, I guess if we start over in this corner here, you can see that we've got a new tri-flange through hole here. Uh, these are really nice valves right here. They've got a flange, it bolts into the hole and 
the through hole comes up underneath and threads in to the body of this. So these are a really good secure way as opposed to just a through hole with a valve twisted on, which isn't really the correct one. Uh, through hole uh, fitting has a straight thread as opposed to a valve has a, a pipe thread on it, which is tapered. And so this is really the correct way to attach a valve through a vessel into a through hole. So we've got this one here. Uh, let's see, you can see there was two here that are gone now. Um, this one actually had to be uh, kind of like patched over and then redrilled because it was slightly smaller. This is a, a inch and a quarter through hole. Um, it replaced an inch and a half. Oh, what else we got down here? This little guy down here. Uh, there's another through hole right here, which used to be an old transducer. We eliminated that one. Um, we put in this transducer, which actually came from the other side. And the reason we had to move that mat, uh, the reason we moved that is because we put this ginormous three inch valve in here. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that was the reason, right? Yeah, it was. And so uh, where the position of this big three inch through hole is, is pretty much right where that, uh, where that transducer was. And so we needed to get it out of the way in order to put this in there. And in order to get this in there, it had to be as low as possible to that stringer, which also meant that we had to move our keel cooler for the generator. Yep, so this is the keel cooler stem, I guess it's called, and uh, the keel cooler runs that way along the hole. Mm -hmm. So we moved it up a little bit. Uh, I think the old hole, hole is, uh, I like to pull this and show it. Pull that over a little bit, chip it. So here's the old hole right here. So it moved up approximately six inches and that gave us clearance for that big valve down there. Um, on the other side, there's a big strainer. So that's why it took up more space than it seemed like it needed to. So yeah, the generator's all been replumbed. Um, we replaced that. We replaced all the keel cooler hoses. They were in pretty rough shape. They're old, brittle, cracked. Um, uh, when I removed this, it just broke that piece right off. And uh, and it was pretty weird. It was just kind of like, oh, like an elbow here out of metal. We just went ahead and made a nice stainless drop pipe that's bolted in here. You can grab onto it without fear of it, you know, Breaking ripping things. off or anything. So it's much more rigid um, connection. Got a little, just kind of a piece of buoy right here, just to give it a little bit of wiggle room for when it starts and stops. Um, so that turned out real good. Um, you Fairly swing back the other way. I'll let you through. Well, I'll, I'll just be locked and all. I guess I can just talk. Um, we swing back the other way. You can see the crab pump in the corner. Uh, that's not quite done, but the components are all mostly fit. Yeah, Dad uh, built a stainless bracket to mount it to on the wall there. And uh, also a uh, couple of stainless flanges right here and right there that screw into this pump housing. So you can see the two bronze uh, pipe nipples right there. That will just be connected with a short piece of uh, bellows flex, which is a uh, wire reinforced rubber hose. It won't collapse because that's the suction side. And so that just needs to be put in there and tightened up, but we're just getting all the rest of these components in here. There's like two uh, T flanges that go in here and all the valving in order to not only fill our tanks, but also to empty them using the pump. So I don't think I covered really any of that just because it was really hard to film. And yeah, we were kind of crunching for time. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at down here. Yeah, um, down here, uh, real quick. Uh, these are our fuel lines, uh, two on port, two on starboard. And then uh, I think one is an auxiliary line, and actually I think two are, right? 
Is that what we had planned there? So this one drops into our tiny little forward sump and that'll be hooked to a pump to, uh, yes. to pump right. out the shaft alley. Uh, this one will go to what will become a lazarette or if you want to call it our tankage compartment. It's just going to be a line that we can uh, tie into the pump here so if we ever have any water that collects back there we can pump it. I don't really ever anticipate like flooding per se back there uh, just because the, uh, the rudder is so high up in the stern there's very little water pressure on that and should be very little leakage coming through that stuffing box. Uh, the only like reason that you might have water back there flooding would be possibly a hatch on deck that's failed or something the seal on it so still good to be able to pump it out back there so that's what that line's for um, these two stainless ones right here are fuel lines for one side uh, one is a suction one's a return and same thing on this side for the starboard side suction and return line and so those go through the shaft alley and they'll be tied into the tanks in the back and this one here will just be for a water line to go through our fresh water line we just used a, a larger pipe here so we could put some insulation on there and we're just going to run pecs through it and so all this stuff still needs to be trimmed we need to put some blocking back in here but these are essentially like fiberglass tubes that are glassed on the inside of the shaft alley and making you know just a very nice clean uh, connection there and then it also protects whatever kind of foam will go back in here and, and just kind of keep it from absorbing a bunch of crud. Uh, we did the same thing with our shaft and I think we might have caught that, some of that footage. I so think we got a little bit of it. Yeah. If you guys have seen it from the other side, you kind of know what we're talking about here. Um, other than that, everything is all bolted up, the shaft, bearings, it's all aligned. We motored over here under our own power when we were launched and we did capture that footage, I guess. So you'll see that at some point in the future. So <laughs> yeah, kind of uh, lots of stuff to talk about and lots of things to catch up on. Yeah, oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, over here on the port side, you can see uh, uh, through, uh, I guess it's a flange, fiberglass flange that we glassed in and Yep, that's just a fiberglass flange we made. It's got uh, bl uh, blind nuts on the back side, stainless nuts, so we can uh, bolt it up. And that will be for our overboard, so for pumping out our fish holds, that's where the water will be directed to pump it overboard out of the boat. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of it down here for now. Yeah, that covers most of it. Yeah, we removed a lot of wiring for the old refrigeration here and cleaned the stuff up some. Generators all back online other than hooking up the fuel system to it, a uh, Raycor. Uh, just kind of had a little tub here to run it and uh, get, the, get the system bled, get the, uh, the coolant system bled on it so there's no air pockets in it or anything. Um, yeah. So it probably seems like we have a ton of stuff to go through and still finish up and that's true in a way but if we look back to like last October um, it's amazing how far we've actually come. We were just looking at some pictures from was that late October or early October? Uh, late, November 1st. November 1st so late October. Yep. Yeah and so our our shaft alley was still completely open. There was no shaft, there was no bearing blocks. There was no fuel lines. Yeah, the None back bulkhead right there. here still had a slot in it. Yeah. That, no, that was done. I, I don't guess think we can go down and show off. The, the combing wouldn't have been finished, any of that stuff. So we've actually come uh, incredibly long ways since then. And so that uh, November, December, that was a two month period that we Got a lot of this work done. So 
So yeah, if we go down here, uh, that's the, the flange that goes through the um, fish hold bulkhead into the engine room. It's a fiberglass flange that uh, is just glassed into here and a tube that goes through and a flange on the other side. So we never have to worry about resealing this or having any water seep through, getting in behind the fiberglass. Um, this plumbing would be for our circulation to live tank crab. It'll come out. Uh, let's see. Everything's all patched up now. It's all gel coated. All of this has been tied back in and cleaned up. Um, the shaft alleys are done. The sumps are done. The only thing that isn't done is this uh, inspection hatch. You can see that we built in a really big, thick, heavy knife edge here. And that will rest against the gasket and the hatch itself. There's a cross piece that goes through here, a stainless cross piece, and it drops into a little slot right here. You could probably hand that to me if you wanted to, Matt. Sure. Um, this is a system that we've used on the fishtail successfully for uh, two decades now. Never had a problem with it. So it's really just a heavy stainless strap. It's got a bolt in it. Just got to kind of get it in here. So there's basically just a slot in this right here and a thin piece of fiberglass. Well, it's actually a thick piece of fiberglass. This just holds it from falling down. I just got a couple of chunks of putty on here. Um, I was just using it to see if it would compress. This hatch still needs a little bit trimmed off the edge. Um, it was built long, so um, yeah. So here is the hatch itself. It's extremely thick and robust. Got a, a, a thick, thick knife edge on here. I think it's uh, 3 8 inch. And I'd say this is about the same. So we'll put a, a thick layer of of some kind of gasket material in here. It might be some pourable. We might just use silicone like we did on the fishtail. But essentially this knife edge here will interface with that and compress it slightly, making a very strong waterproof seal. Um, the top side, the bolt just drops through here with the bolt. So we can just put it in here and you can see what it looks like. So there's a lot of comments and people wondering how we were going to do this. Um, it's important that this is removable. You can certainly put down a plate with bolts, but it's something that you will not open up on a regular basis. And that's the problem, is that you really should be able to get in here, get in here quickly if you need to, and check on your bearings or just do any kind of inspections that you need to. It's particularly important on the back hold where your stuffing box is because that does need to be serviced regularly. You need to get in there and tighten it up if it's leaking too much. Um, you need to add packing on a regular basis if it needs it. So having these removable like this, um, it takes about 30 seconds to back the bolt out and lift the hatch off. And then you're in there, you can see what's going on. Yeah, if it's hard to open up and access, you're gonna be lazy about it and not do it. Yeah, if you've got if you've got 20 bolts on there holding a plate down that's got 5,200 underneath of it, it's not a simple thing of just coming down here and taking it off and looking in there to see if everything is good. It's a big, huge process. The 5,200 rips up your fiberglass. You gotta open up a new tube of it. You gotta seal it back down again. It's not very ideal. Um, a lot of guys use aluminum hatches for this. Uh, those work fine, although they are subject to corrosion and failure over time. And these hatches are not cheap when you're talking about aluminum hatches. They're six or seven hundred dollars each. And so it's a perfectly fine alternative, but not very ideal for long term. Yeah, also I guess like, uh, they're not technically supposed to be used as a body or hole type 
technically Cash. they're not. Oh. Um, guys do use them and they do fine, but they're not technically made for that and the manufacturer will tell you that. They're fine on the deck because they're assuming that you're not going to have very much pressure on there. If you do, it's gonna be for a short term, but you know, as you go deeper in your fish hold, you're putting more pressure on that. And, uh, and they're just really not designed for that. However, this will be fine. We'll have no corrosion issues. Um, we shouldn't have any problems with it maintaining a seal. Like I say, we've done the exact same thing on the fishtail and we've never had a problem with it. And so uh, the bolt will just drop straight through here into that stainless plate. And when you draw up the bolt and tighten it, it, it draws up the bar and, and it holds it against the bottom down here. So it's a very simple design. There's really nothing to fail. It's also uh, R15 with three layers of foam. Yeah, so there's three layers of foam here. So it gives us about an R15 of insulation purposes. And so that's nice. It shouldn't sweat. Aluminum will sweat. It'll sweat all the time. It'll corrode. All that junk is dropping right on your your bearing and, and other places. This should be good. It shouldn't really sweat and, and have that problem. So yeah. really happy with how that turned out. Um, there's enough clearance under here where it's not hitting the bearing or anything. So that's where we are with that. Um, I don't know if you can really see the lines down in here, but they just need to be, uh, we need to pick up some brackets and these will be bolted in uh, next to these fuel lines. Um, the fuel lines are all bolted in. They just need to be tightened up, but there's brackets there. I guess we can show you that in the back. Um, split bearing, everything's lined up. It's all in place. That was a very long process, one which we didn't really capture too much of because it's just fiddly slow stuff. Yep. And so I, I think everybody uh, saw us actually putting, assembling them and, and positioning them but as far as aligning the shaft, it's a slow process. Um, I'm sure if you do it on a regular basis in the, in the course of your job, it's probably pretty simple and straightforward uh, for us. It wasn't, but I think we got it done correctly and it'll be, should be fine. So I think that kind of wraps it up for down here. Uh, you know, the bulkhead is all in place. Everything is, uh, is gel coated. It turned out really good. Um, we've got some very heavy, uh, I guess, uh, structural framing that we incorporated into it. And it does double duty as bin board holders. So those will slot in here. We still need to put the old aluminum ones on here. They'll eventually be replaced with something more like this and we'll get rid of that aluminum channel, but for now it'll be fine. But yeah, eh, we did the same thing on the back side. We got these same supports like that. So this bulkhead is incredibly strong and robust. I think we're in pretty good shape with two layers. And <laughs> I know that we overbuild things and that's okay. Um, we're not looking for a, a, a boat that's like light enough to race. So a few extra pounds of fiberglass and resin aren't really going to kill us speed wise. Yep. But they will give us a lot of reinsurance um, when we fill this thing up with water and fish that it's not going to blow out and cause us to lose stability and roll the boat. So yeah, that's where we're at here. So up here on deck, uh, everything is really more or less finished up. Um, the gel coating has been done on the hatch combing and they're finished. Uh, the deck joint yep. where it met the bulwarks is for the most part finished and gel coated. Uh, just a couple little spots where like the lines went through right there, didn't get gel coated. Um, up forward. Matt got both of these sides um, reinforced 
as you can see over here. And that turned out real good. Yeah, so before there was uh, basically just a laminated chunk of, uh, I guess, just plywood, a couple layers of plywood there, and they were just glassed in. Uh, there was some water saturated in them. and wet. <laughs> uh, so, Delaminating. Yeah, so we ripped those off and uh, just went in with a nice heavy chunk of, uh, well, put the pre laminated side of the uh, foam against uh, the hole over there and then just glassed over it. We have a nice heavy web in between where both sides covered right there and yep. actually right here is where the side stays come down for the mast so we want to be sure that was good and rigid and thick yeah so this needs cleaned up a little bit but you can see the top bolts here the other bolts are out that's why you can see light through them we'll come in here with a thick stainless plate that'll help spread the load you know between everything here and tie it in real well mm -hmm. um, that turned out great uh, that was kind of a, a weak point there, so um, disregard the rails and everything. They need work. Most of it is is rotten in places anyways. Yeah, it's in pretty it's, good shape right here. It's actually better over here. <laughs> the other side is like it's hammered. Pretty it's, yeah. it's pretty done over there. Yeah. Um, you can kind of see the bottom of the stabby pole right there. It got propped out because uh, I'm not sure why they designed it this way, but they should have centered the pole over the bulwarks. Um, it's kind of racking it in a little bit, so that's why I jammed those in there before I glassed those pieces in to kind of just push it out for future us to worry about. Yeah, that stuff will get modified and we'll change that around a little bit. Yep. These poles will get trimmed down, which is gonna change the load on them and uh, the, the bracket and stuff will We'll redo. I think we'll make it similar to the fishtail where it's tied in to the mast and a heavy plate on the deck that really spread the load out over there. And then the other thing is then we can actually hang a block or whatever we want off of that. And it's very, very rigid and strong and basically spreads all the load of hauling gear, like having a purse line go through it or long line gear, anything like that, a crab block. Mm -hmm. It's going to spread that out over the over the deck. And yeah, a lot of the saners you see, they just have like a, a roller stanchion uh, on the bulwark right there. Mm -hmm. But by having it integrated like we do, uh, yeah, it really does add a lot of strength to it. And it also ends up with a cleaner deck. You don't have that, that stanchion right there. Yeah. So this side's the same. It's just gel coated. It turned out real good. Um, Elsewhere on the deck, uh, I guess uh, Matt and Tristan got the the hatch back here installed. Um, that goes back a long ways, <laughs> a yeah, long, long ways, which was ever, ever, actually never finished. Um, yeah, it just we, needs to we, be uh, sealant added and bolted down. Fitted up, uh, Dad has welded a couple of uh, threaded plugs on the bottom of this hatch ring so we'll be able to bring a bolt up through the bottom of of this wood here and <coughs> mount it that way rather than poke a hole through our ring and put a carriage bolt or yeah. have that kind of uh, protrusion going through to probably cause leaks later or anything <coughs> like that. Yeah, it's pretty common just to, to drill holes um, in a carriage bolt problem with that is you've got stainless against aluminum right here at the top and you always have bad corrosion underneath that which ruins these hatch rings over time that's expensive to replace and uh, and then you also have a carriage bolt to if you're sliding pots or anything across the deck it's always going to be hitting that and uh, it can damage stuff so this is a, a really nice clean way to do it like Matt said, there's just a plug underneath that's threaded, so the bolt comes up through the wood underneath into that plug, and it draws the deck ring down. We did the same thing on the fishtail. It turned out really nice and, uh, and no issues. So I think that's kind of it for the deck. Um, 
still just a little gel coat to do on this side. Just got a bunch of junk in the way right now. Yep, need to spin the boat around and actually clean up uh, the scupper, the scuppers that we had uh, patched back in and actually uh, connected the deck to more securely. Yeah. Um, oh, hatch over. covers. Um, we have an aluminum hatch cover at home. It's got the edges bent. I just need to weld it out and put in hand holds and also the ring uh, that we can dump fish or crab through. So um, we do have a hatch cover made or partially made. Uh, here's the old one for the back. The boy's got it uh, all foamed in and laminate over the top. It's not a perfectly flat and smooth. It's got a few dips and whatnot, but it doesn't really matter because eventually it's gonna get a layer of wood over the top yeah for the false deck which you'll see hopefully sometime this fall so we do have deck material for the boat um, that we ordered in it's a, a plastic deck composite it's a hundred percent plastic as opposed to some of the other ones that are like recycled plastic and sawdust or other organic materials that can rot over time so we're really excited to use that stuff um, it's a nice light blue-ish gray, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I think it's gonna look pretty nice. Yeah. So we've got some uh, one inch thick pieces to go over our hatches and then the rest is just uh, standard like uh, a two by, which is about an inch and a half. So um, at some point we'll get that attached to here. And then of course you won't even see that finish right there. Um, still insulated, which is nice. This is kind of the old hatch trimmed down. There's some notches in here because we need to be able to bolt this and seal it. And we'll have a heavy gasket on here. So it pulls down and seals it so we can keep water intrusion into the back hold. Uh, I should say we can prevent it. Somewhere we've got some, some brackets for it right here. Uh, these are actually ones that we made for the fishtail and, and we didn't use, so I guess we'll just use them on here. But uh, these will be mounted in the corners right here. And same thing, a bolt can come through and draw this hatch down. There'll be a neoprene gasket that's attached to the hatch itself. And that will provide a waterproof, watertight uh, connection between the two. And I guess last but not least is the rear hold. Okay, last but not least, the rear hold. Uh, it's a lot more cramped down here, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, looking at the rear bulkhead, it's in place. The reinforcements are in place. We added a couple of extra ribs right here and then in the center. Uh, just be sure that we never had any any problem with this bulkhead. Um, these are the same as the forward one where we can use this also as our bin board holder. So this is all finished out, tapped out. The combing is all done. Uh, for the most part, everything is done from the shaft alley back up. So the last part we're, that we're at here is just uh, getting these connections for these fuel lines and water lines that will go through here. I guess we gotta put them in about right here to clear the floor in that tankage compartment. And um, we'll get those all tied in. Uh, this is just stainless Schedule 40 pipe. Um, we're gonna tie into these with just some tube. We've got JIC fittings that are welded to the end of this, so it'll be a nice easy connection. And we'll just run some half inch tubing through there um, we've got a bender so we can manipulate that, that tubing however we need to to get a nice transition going through. And uh, that'll work out real good. Um, got our pipes that'll need to come through here. And uh, we'll set up some clamps. We'll get these same kind of clamps like this, except they'll be for inch and a quarter pipe. And I think that we're just gonna put in a little plate behind these and then clamp them and they'll just run parallel with our fuel lines right here. Um, 
the stuffing box is in. It, uh, it turned out really good. No leaks, no problems. We had to realign it at some point, but, uh, but that all worked out good. I don't think I caught that on camera because it was, I was yeah, really... Yeah, it was, uh, it was left out. It was one of those things that's like, it just had to happen quickly. Um, we were ready for it, and when we originally put the shafting back in, and we had this lined up, we thought, but after, uh, after we put the, the wheel on and, and started to get it in a place, we discovered that it was actually off and the shaft was rubbing on the inside of the stuffing box. So there's not a lot of clearance on the back side of it down in here. It's about the same as this right here, I guess, which is probably like a little bit over an eighth of an inch and it was just slightly off the angle of this. So while it looked good up here, it wasn't good back in here. So I just made another quick shim. Um, it's actually this thickness that you see right here. I built it up on, on the back of this. This stuff was in place because the shaft was already in. It was bolted, the bearings were in. Um, I think that's why I didn't capture anything because yeah. I was in a hurry to get it done. And so <laughs> I just laid it up right on the back side of this and crossed my fingers that I'd be able to separate it and get it cleaned up and, you know, not nick the shaft in the process of grinding it down and oh boy what a fiasco it was uh, but once i had it done i was able to put it back into place i used our our spacers that we had made for this and uh, i glued it into the existing fiberglass and it turned out great yeah it look, looks really good now yeah it does and so um this is all in place these are loose right now because we were running the boat a little earlier and for the first five hours or so of breaking on this packing this uh this compression flange is just supposed to be loose it's supposed to drip a little bit and so that looks real good um really really happy with that uh, of course the bearings are in and the coupling we're going to come in here we'll get this cleaned up and get some paint on it our original intention was to get this metalized maybe we still will um, we position this bearing where there's just enough room that we can part this and slide this back and remove this. It's very tight, but it can be done. Um, oh, I guess that's really about it down here. Um, the next thing is just to start preparing our shaft alley covers. Um, that's, I guess, what we'll start capturing. And then you guys can see us kind of finish up this process. Uh, and it'll be more or less the same as what happened up forward. So, um, why we cheated you on that content, at least you'll see it back here, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, once those are down, we can get the last tiny bit of foam poured in here and there, and uh, we'll tie this together, and that will be that. Um, gosh, what a project. Yeah, it's been a big project. Yeah. Again, a lot deeper in depth than we originally intended to go with replacing all these stringers and basically just going from the bottom up <laughs> yeah. all new, but it's, it's been worth it. But I, I think in looking back, there was the, the, the acceptance that that would have to be done for this project. Um, they were wood stringers and it was just a thin layer of roving over the top. They were never really meant to be waterproof because this boat wasn't, you know, for the fishery that it was involved in, it didn't need to be uh, a sealed um, shaft alley. Um, I think that's the best thing to have on any boat, regardless of the fishery, but that's the way they set it up, and that's the way it was. So I think one of our uh, frequently asked questions is, why didn't you just buy a new boat? Oh, yeah, so we didn't buy a new boat because our pockets just aren't that deep, to be quite honest with you. So to have a new boat built um, in this range, say 48, 50 foot, you're looking at a million dollars at a minimum. Um, they're just, there's an incredible amount of money involved in it for all the machinery, the shafting, the fiberglass, the hull, the electronics, 
the list just goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. and, and that uh, like doesn't even include like probably uh, probably a backlog of boats already being built. There'd be like probably uh, at least a year of wait time. That's true. Yeah, it's like you just don't go out and say build me a boat. There's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of planning. Um, you have to have your financing in order. And so that's just not an option for us. Um, you know, our intention was to take an older boat and rehabilitate it for the fisheries that we wanted to use it for. And in doing so, it'd be set up the way that we wanted to have it set up. Uh, we could have also bought a boat that was already fishing and working. Um, the problem is though, is that you inherit the other owner's problems for a boat that's similar to this, that might be already engaged in, in seining, like say in Kodiak, and maybe a couple of other fisheries. You're looking at a price tag of $300,000, probably on the low end, and upwards of four hundred or 500000 on the upper end. And these are all boats that are similar in age and have similar problems. Um, you never really know what you're gonna get until you get it and start going through things. Um, most guys aren't gonna let you go through and you know, do destructive testing to see you know, what kind of shape the shaft alley stringers are in. A lot of things are some, somewhat apparent, like the deck and things like that. But uh, to be honest with you, I mean, you're gonna find a boat that's gonna have similar issues like this. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the older ones have balsa core decks that are compromised, uh, masts are sinking into the deck, the framing is rotten. Um, it's any number of problems any that are just problems. like more in depth than you can get into when looking to purchase a boat, so. Yeah, and to be honest with you, what we didn't want was a shallow draft vessel, and that's pretty much everything that's on the market around here. And, uh, and so that wasn't an option there either for us. And then the third one that we get a lot is, why didn't you just pay somebody to do the work for us? Well, it comes back to money again. Um, you can pretty much be sure that you'll pay about three times in labor what you do in materials. So that would have put this project somewhere north of $200,000. Um, labor isn't cheap and good labor isn't cheap. So to find somebody that could cover all the bases on this and do it the way that we wanted to would have been expensive also. And uh, if we're not here to, to watch over somebody's shoulder, there's a lot of things that probably wouldn't be done the way that we wanted them to be done. And there's also issues like, are you getting the quality that you want? Um, we're not afraid to go back and tear something out if we're not happy with how it came out. If we think that we did the job wrong, we'll just go back in there and we'll start over again. And yeah, we do lose time and materials, but at the end of the day, we know it's gonna be done right and that it's gonna last. So I guess that's the answer to those questions. Um, I think it's a lot easier to do things if you have lots and lots of money. Yeah. But that's not where we're at. And plus we get all this great content out of it, so. Yeah, I, I mean, mean. We've really enjoyed sharing this journey with you guys. <laughs> and if, if we just did any of those other examples, then we wouldn't be right here, yep. right now, talking about it, so. Yep, exactly. Yep, and we've had a lot of wonderful comments. We've had um, an incredible amount of support, mm -hmm. and we're very thankful for that. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a fun project, even though fiberglass work isn't like the funnest to do in the yeah, in the world pretty it's unglamorous still, it's it's still it's, satisfying at it the is. end of the day yeah when we get to this point where we're gel coating things and we're looking at what we did and what we accomplished you know there's a sense of pride in that mm -hmm. and uh and this boat will be to our liking when we're done with it and there'll be a lot more projects for this boat than where we're at now so, i mean and this is just the beginning and so it should give you guys Plenty of good laughs and hopefully not too much stress <laughs> for many years to come. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. So I guess with that said, uh, probably about done with this update. Yeah, this is kind of where we're at here and now. And um, hopefully before too long, we get some fish coming over the rails and uh, actually be able to see 
a little change of scenery than what you've seen here so far mm -hmm. and that would be fun for us too we are definitely ready to take her out fishing so. yeah <laughs> so by the end of it i think that we'll be in great shape and we'll be taking off all this stuff after a good throw dusting and um cutting her loose mm -hmm. so i guess with that said thank you all for joining us yeah we really appreciate your support um if you can take a moment to uh, leave a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't. All of that helps our YouTube algorithm and gets us noticed and, you know, brings in more people that might enjoy the content just like you. Yeah. And until then, thanks again for joining us. Yep. Thank you guys. See you next time. See ya.